Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Van Geem at Hammond Power Solutions. Uh, welcome to our presentation today on transformer sizing. Uh, I am the U.S. Marketing Manager, and joining me today will be uh, Sumat Vashist, who is our Low Voltage Distribution Product Manager. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn this over to Sumat, uh, who will do the first half of the presentation. Uh, Sumat? Thank you, Mike. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you are all uh, staying safe and healthy. So my name is Sumant, and I'm based out of uh, our headquarters in Guelph, Ontario. Um, uh, as Mike mentioned, I'm a product manager for uh, low voltage distribution transformers. So anything related to the product, I'm usually involved uh, in that. And today we are going to talk about properly sizing KVA of a distribution transformer. So I would like to begin with the definition of a transformer. What is a transformer? In, in simple words, it's a static device that transfers electric, uh, electrical energy from one circuit to another through the process of electromagnetic induction, uh, which basically utilizes magnetic fields to produce voltage and in a closed circuit, a current. So basically, mutual induction between two or more windings, also known as coils, allow for electrical energy to be transferred between circuits. So if you look at the picture, a transformer typically consists of a magnetic circuit, which is the core, and an electric circuit, which, uh, which consists of primary and secondary winding. Well, let's say you have one winding, uh, you know, also known as a coil, which is supplied by an alternating electrical source. Uh, now, the alternating current through the winding produces continually changing uh, alternating flux. Now, in this scenario, if another winding is brought closer to this winding, some portion of this alternating flux will link with the second winding. The core provides the control path for the magnetic flux. As this flux is continuously changing, it induces the electromagnetic flux in the second winding. So if the circuit of the second winding is closed, the current will, you know, will start flowing through it. The voltage generated on the second winding will in turn depend on the primary to secondary winding ratio. So this is the working principle of, uh, of a transformer. Now, how do we select a transformer for different applications? Well, it depends on a lot of things. Load size in a KVA, uh, what is the source voltage, what is the required load voltage, uh, is it a single phase transformer, a single phase application or a three phase application? what type of winding material is required. Uh, and then there is other information like enclosure types, which depends on the application and where you know it's been used. So today we are going to concentrate uh, on properly understanding the transformer KVA. Now, there are several issues that, you know, which must be taken into um, account when sizing the KV of a transformer. The actual load, uh, potential load, which is basically the load of panels being fed by a transformer, um, load in rush, local codes, efficiency, et cetera. We'll dive into each one of these uh, in details to understand how they impact the KV sizing of a transformer. Uh, I'll start off with how do we define and mathematically calculate KVA. So as you see on the screen, so KVA is the unit of apparent power, uh, which is basically kilo volt, uh, kilo volt ampere. So in a perfect world, apparent power should be equal to the real power, uh, but that's not the case in the real world, and we'll discuss that in detail in you know in further slides. Uh, but over here, you can see the calculation of single-phase and three-phase KVAs. 
so you basically need the voltage and ampere required at the load to do this calculation now you can do this manually using this formula or you can you know use the quick guide that i'll show you uh, on the next slide so this is a quick guide for uh, for full load current table uh, on left side you see the single phase table and on the right side you see the three phase table so this table basically uses the mathematical formula from the previous slide to do the calculation you can keep this guide handy with you for quick reference instead of you know doing all those calculations uh, uh, it has common kvas and voltages and their corresponding amperes for example single phase 240 volt and 100 kva transformer the full load current would be 416 ampere similarly for a three phase at 480 volt a 75 kva transformer will generate a full load current of 90.2 ampere so as a quick reference you can you know use this guys to make sure you have the right kva size based on your load current and voltage so actual load is basically the load required by your end appliance or equipment but the actual load is just a starting point there are a lot of other factors that may increase the kva required and that's why it's very important to have a close knowledge of the site uh, for example a lot of times transformers run uh, a low load factor because of unknown load conditions which require higher safety or safe higher service or safety factors so that's why it's important to have uh, you know a good knowledge of the site transformer is a component in the distribution system now in this distribution uh, distribution system there are cable conduits circuit breakers etc that needs to be sized correctly so if you change the kva of the transformer that would mean you would need to resize the other components as well in this distribution system so it is important that while sizing the transformer we take into consideration the possibility of future load expansions this way you can avoid costly future replacement as the picture says plan ahead in the last slide i made a comment that actual load is a starting point so potential load is you know is actual load plus all other considerations in that distribution system so potential load is that final point so let's look at an example to better understand uh, this uh, this concept so here is an example of uh, how actual load and potential load work so let's say you have a 200 amp panel board that is going to supply a total load of 90 amps now do you size it for 200 amps or you size it for 90 amps the answer is you size it for 200 amps of the panel uh, in this example the potential load is 200 amps and the actual load is 90 amps but the actual load might change the future so that's why uh, you know again reiterating that same point that's why it is important you know to avoid you know if you want to avoid any future additional costs we should size the transformer based on 200 amps of the panel power factor is defined as the ratio of real power absorbed by the load to the apparent power flowing in the circuit now in a perfect world apparent power uh, should be equal to the real power but that's not the case in the real world in the real world you know you have inductive loads that create reactive power and reactive power is either generated or absorbed by uh, by electrical generators or in some cases devices known as capacitors uh, and they're trying to maintain um, a constant voltage level commonly referred to as providing voltage support uh, let me use an uh, analogy over here to explain how it works think of a mug of a beer uh, picture the elements uh, you know the mug the beer and the foam 
Now imagine that the three elements together present the picture of power. Now the Mach capacity represents the apparent power, which is KVA. The beer itself represents the active power, which is KW. The foam represents the reactive power, which is KVAR. So power factor is the ratio between the active power KW and the apparent power KVA. Now using the beer analogy, we obtain that the power factor by dividing the beer by the mug capacity. And it's clear you're getting less beer than you are paying for with all that foam taking up the space. So these three types of power, they relate to one another in a trigonometric form. Now using the laws of trigonometry, we can solve for the length of any side, you know, given the length of the other two sides or length of one side and an angle. Now power factor can be an important aspect to consider in an AC circuit because if the power factor is less than one, that means the circuit's wiring has to carry more current than what would be necessary with zero reactance in the circuit to deliver the same amount of real power to the resistive load. So that's why it's important to size the transformer based on apparent power. Let's look at an example uh, of how it's calculated. So a 100 amp load at 0 0.80 power factor actually needs 125 amps based on calculation above. Now the transformer in this case has to be sized on 125 amps, not 100 amps. So uh, let's you know, briefly touch on uh, uh, about inrush current. So inrush current is the maximum uh, instantaneous input current drawn by the electrical device when first turned on. The energization inrush results from the reapplication of system voltage to a de-energized transformer. Now, the inrush current can last for a few seconds and can be as high as 15 to 20 times the transformer's current rating. Now, during the inrush current, the maximum value attained by the flux is over twice the normal flux. So, fuses, circuit breakers, and cabling is sized for the transformer, not the load. So, if fuses and circuit breakers are sized for the smaller actual load, they can trip on energization from the inrush current. So we, we do recommend the use of electrical cords to size the circuit breakers and fuses. Uh, so transformers are basically you know, current limiting uh, devices which limit short circuit current. Uh, so transformers, you know, they have a maximum short circuit current which is you know denoted by C max SC, and fuses and circuits have a maximum current level called AIC. So this AIC reading has to be greater than uh, C max SC, and C max rating is influenced by transformers impedance. So let's look at an example of how you can calculate it using the impedance. Uh, if you look at this example, so this is uh, the nameplate that you see over here. It's a Sentinel G low voltage uh, transformer nameplate. So the amperage and impedance is circled uh, in this in this example. So to calculate that AIC, we divide 90.2 by 5%, which gives you 1804 ampere, which is about 20 times the current. So I'll, you know, from here I'll pass it on to Mike to uh, to walk you through uh, through the remaining slides. Thank you. Thank you, Sumat. All right. So yeah, as Billy what Sumat said, we have to make sure that the fuses and circuit breakers can handle both the inrush current and uh, and the they're capable of clearing a fault, which which is the maximum AIC. Another big thing to remember is that the loads that you're powering from a transformer often have an inrush associated with them. So motors that are started across the line 
have an inrush until they get up to speed. And there are ways to limit that inrush, such as using reduced voltage starters, uh, which can limit it, or using variable frequency drives can actually eliminate the inrush. Uh, but we have to make sure that the transformer is sized to be able to handle the inrush. And the issue with the inrush is we're not so much concerned about the extra current heating up the transformer. It will heat up the transformer if it lasts long enough, but motor inrush typically lasts just for a few seconds, you know, maybe five or 10 seconds on, a, you know, on an extreme load, maybe a little bit longer, but we're not so much worried about the transformer overheating. What we're worried about is that when, the, when this inrush occurs and it's trying to give this motor all this extra current, what's gonna happen is that anytime the output current exceeds the transformer's rating, the output voltage starts to drop. The more you exceed that current, the more voltage drop you have. And we're worried that when that motor starts, the output voltage will drop. And there's a couple things that happen. Uh, one, as the voltage drops, you rob the motor of starting torque. It doesn't have as much torque to turn the load, which means it might take even longer to get up to speed. Um, that's actually how reduced voltage starter works, but they're designed to do that. We don't want to unintentionally use a transformer as a reduced voltage starter. That's not what they're designed to do. Then you can destroy it. Uh, because the current inrush will last longer, things like fuses and circuit breakers and motor thermals may trip, and then you will start to get nuisance tripping because the voltage uh, has dropped down. Now, we do offer some helpful sizing charts. Uh, these are in our catalog, and you can see here how the, um, you know, a 10 horsepower motor, which is about seven and a half kVA, we're recommending a transformer roughly twice as big, 15 kVA in this case. So, you know, this is a rough chart. Uh, you know, you can kind of take the motor horsepower and multiply it by about 1.5 to figure out what you need in an average case. Uh, you can also work with us if you're worried about uh, making sure that your voltage doesn't drop too low. Um, if you want to work with us, uh, we're probably going to ask what's the base load. So, you know, in addition to the motor, what other load is there on that transformer? We're going to need to know the inrush data of the transformer. We're going to want to know the maximum voltage drop you want. And again, keep in mind this chart represents the minimum KVA. Like you should never go below this but in many applications you may still need to go even higher than what our chart represents the other big issue that you will worry about with motor inrush and having that you know affect the voltage output is that everything else that runs off that voltage output whether it's a computer or a light or something like that could also trip and have problems at low voltages so again something to, to keep in mind Another big thing when sizing transformers is understand that sometimes local codes also dictate a minimum transformer size or a minimum panel size. Now, a lot of times, uh, you know, we will represent, talk about the National Electric Code, but local codes may also differ. And there's different versions of the National Electrical Code. Local codes may also require electrical systems to have a minimal sizing or load factors. And the example here is that, you know, if I have an office building or a school or a hospital, they may say that that room or that, you know, for every so many square feet, X amount of power is required for that room. And it varies whether it's an office or a warehouse or something like that. Again, you may calculate and say, hey, I need 100 but the minimum sizing by the code might be 125. Just something to keep in mind. The next thing to remember is that we're also somewhat concerned about phase unbalance. If we are running something that is a three-phase so uh, three-phase load, like a three-phase motor, a variable frequency drive, a class you know three or level three car charger, those are all three-phase loads, and they take basically the equivalent power from all three phases. Phase unbalance typically is a result of single phase loads. And, you know, I have a three phase transformer and it means I can take three separate single phase loads and it's rare that, that a lot of times those three phase loads will balance. Uh, so in this example, you know, we have a three phase load of 33 kVA 
So we each phase, uh, or, or the total KVA load is 33 KVA, but then we have single phase loads of 15 KVA, 11 KVA, 9 KVA on those. Now, you would think, oh, I just need to add together 33 KVA plus 15 plus 11 plus 9 KVA, I get 68 KVA. I can use a 75 KVA transformer. The problem with that is that that's the average load across all three phases. The issue is that the maximum load on a given phase is 15 KVA. So I have to make sure that that phase, that individual phase can handle the 33 KVA plus, the plus 15 KVA in each phase, Basically, it's 33 plus 3 times 15, which is 33 plus 45 equals 78 kVA. So if you actually look at this example, you'd think a 75 kVA transformer would be okay. The reality is you'd need 112 kVA. And keep in mind, this doesn't include things like power factor and other stuff that we've talked about earlier. Another thing to recognize is that you know customers obviously are concerned uh, I had a question here. Is there any code that specifies this rule? And uh, Claudia, I assume you mean this rule right here. No, I don't believe there's a specific code that addresses this. Uh, this just goes into, again, how you size it uh, as, as far as the, as the KVA load. The code will, will, tell you, will tell you how you size the wires, maybe the broad stuff and how you size the transformers, but the code I don't believe goes into individual single phase loads like this. And this is another example of why a lot of times people oversize transformers because it is tough to judge what your single phase load is actually going to be in a given circuit. Talking about oversizing transformers, uh, this kind of leads into this, which is transformers, uh, for most part, distribution transformers, power transformers, all have to meet efficiency standards. 600 volt class transformers, maximum efficiency, and in fact, the only efficiency that's actually required by the government is that 35% load. Government doesn't dictate any other efficiency in another load. Everything is wrapped around 35% load. If it's greater than 600 volts, those efficiencies are given at 50% load. And the reason for this is the government's determined that this is the average load of a transformer. So while um, you know we're, we're sitting here looking at this, 78 kVA, the other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times that KVA that we're calculating here varies. This might be during, let's say, office hours, you know, at noon on a hot day in June like it is today, but the load may be very different at night when all the lights and computers, everything are turned off of. Uh, that's why you might size that 78 KVA load for 112 KVA transformer. Say, oh, that's at 75%, uh, roughly 75% load. But the reality is at night, it may only be a 10% load. And that average probably comes to around 35% load. What I'm getting to here is that if you're trying to size a transformer and efficiency is a concern, ideally, the transformer would be sized so that the KVA uh, and your load, roughly the load will average out 35% of the KVA of a low voltage transformer or 50% for medium voltage. That's where you'll get your maximum efficiency. Obviously, there's all these other concerns we have with sizing the transformer properly. You may not be able to get that exact number, but that's what we're looking at. The center tap. So most modern loads today use a delta Y configuration, and that's what we typically recommend. But there are still quite a few loads that come as a delta input, delta output. The most common one is 480 volts primary to 240 volts secondary. If you're in Canada, it would be 600 volts primary, 240 volts secondary. Uh, in the US especially, it's very prevalent to have what we call a center tap on one of the phases, which means that there's a tap halfway between the 240 volt tap, which means I can draw 120 volts. Please keep in mind that that center tap is only rated for 5% of the transformer's KVA. So if I have a 75 KVA transformer, I can only get 3.75 KVA from that center tap. We have had people think that they can get the full 75 KVA or that they can use the transformer as a three phase, a single phase conversion unit. That is not the case. Uh, and that 5% rating is pretty much, pretty much any manufacturer has a center tap, it's at 5%. I believe there's one manufacturer out there that offers as an option a higher tap for a much higher price, but that is that is the option. 
if you need more than 3.75 kVA, one option you can do is to take a single phase transformer, a 240 volt to 120 volt transformer, and wire it to one of the other two phases and, and draw it off of a second phase using a second transformer. That is a way to get additional kVA. So we're always talking about kVA, and there are a lot of cases where kVA is actually not how we size the device. Now, kVA is nice, you know, kilovolt amps. Uh, however, there are certain transformers that you probably don't want to necessarily only use kVA. <clears throat> Drive isolation transformers, by the way, are sized by motor uh, sizing. As we say with drive isolation transformers, I'm not a poet, but uh, don't be smart, use the chart. The reason for that is that the KVA of a drive isolation transformer is derated to make sure that it can handle the proper load. The best example I can give you is 100 horsepower. There's roughly 746 watts to the horsepower. So 100 horsepower is roughly a 75 KVA load, and yet we're suggesting 118 KVA drive isolation transformer. That's because of the additional heating from the harmonics. That's been the classic deload factor for that. So again, drive ISOs, use the horsepower chart. Don't size it by the KV of the load. Motor starting auto transformers, which we also make, uh, they are sized by the motor's horsepower and duty cycle, which is how many starts per hour. Uh, grounding transformers, uh, which are kind of a sub-transformer that people use to protect and detect ground faults. They're actually sized by amperage and the length of time of the fault before your system clears it. And buck boost transformers, uh, we use an isolation transformer, which is a what we call a, a low voltage lane transformer. It might use for your like patio lights outside, but we don't wire it up as an isolation transformer. We wire it up as an auto transformer. And uh, again, we have a number of charts or we have some programs that you can use to size a buck boost transformer. But when you wire it up as an auto transformer, that buck boost transformer's nameplate won't be accurate. It's actually going to be able to handle a load substantially higher than what the nameplate indicates. Uh, speaking of that, we also have our uh, HPS toolbox. We have a current voltage KVA calculator. So if you're trying to figure out, hey, you know, what is the KVA I need or how do I calculate this out, you can just go to our um, toolbox at www.hpstoolbox go to the current calculator as long as you know um two of the three amps volts or kva and you also have to know if it's single phase or three phase it will calculate the uh the remaining missing variable for you thank you very much for your time greatly appreciate it thank you so much everybody